All right. So we're going to, this is going to be recorded and then I'll download it. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll figure that out. Alrighty. And let's get Mickey in here. There we go. All right. So here we are. We're live, Nick. I mean, we just got here, you know, a little late. I don't know what was going on. Chloe was late, you know, getting back from the final four. She, you know, had a tough time getting on Zoom and all that. You think anybody believes us? Well, pretty nice gal. And then all of a sudden, you know, gets on TV a couple of times and she's high maintenance. I don't get it. <laughs> so nobody will believe this, but we had some technical difficulties. Um, all my fault. I don't know what's going on. I still don't know what's going on. Um, but we're happy to be joined by Chloe Lamp. <laughs> this will be recorded. And then since we've had diff te technical difficulties, I'll download it to Facebook and I'll download it to, uh, um, what you call it? YouTube. Yeah. How about, how about we do that? Chloe, you all right with that? Sounds good. All right. So Chloe Lamb, welcome to our show. Um, you know, we are Charlie Coyotes right behind us. Uh, we're at the worldwide headquarters of GGL ice. Um, the best ice packs in the country. And, uh, this is a, pretty special place because Mike Cloth uh, owns the uh, the business and owns this building and has us over here once in a while and we have a good time. So Chloe, you're on a very special time because we don't always get to be in, in this building, but it's always fun to be around a lot of coyotes. I think you'd agree with that. Absolutely. Much, much better than uh, people wearing blue, I'd say. So. Yeah. Yeah. They had their fun this weekend. So yeah, there we'll you have go. our fun today. Yes. So uh, Chloe, uh, let's kind of work our way back let's talk about this weekend and uh you were up in minneapolis at the final four yeah yep up in up in the cities um got to experience the final four um went for the so you want to be a coach program so that was what day wednesday thursday friday um so went down wednesday kind of a little welcome session and everything um so lots of, you know, just girls wanting to, wanting to get into coaching. Um, we came from a lot of different uh, experience, experiences, you could say, you know, some were maybe played division one at mid-major and then had transferred down a level and played D2. Um, some had played division three and were there. Um, so it was fun to see, you know, kind of all the different schools that we came from and, and different experiences that we've had to. So uh, how did you get into this program? Um, so Madison McKeever, um, about two years ago, um, she was looking to get into coaching and she had signed up and, and got accepted um, and was set to go when, you know, and everything kind of kind of ended there. Um, so, yeah, she was kind of the one that kind of headed the whole thing, you know, and, and so I was able to you know, kind of use some of her documents and, and everything through the application process. And, and then my coaches knew about it being part of the um, WBCA and, and all of that as well. Awesome. And so maybe kind of take us through what, uh, you know, yeah, obviously you were learning about coaching, but you know a little bit about coaching. So what, what were kind of the steps that they, they took you through? Um, yeah, so we had a lot of speakers, um, and again, speakers from the D3 level, um, you know, people that, that everyone knows, Joni Taylor, um, going to Texas A&M now, um, she was at Georgia, she spoke to us, um, there were different, different topics, there was a, you know, being a mom and coaching, um, had a recruiting panel and uh, panelists that talked about being an assistant coach, um, there was also one that I thought was kind of interesting that I hadn't even really thought about was, um, you know, that relationship between a coach and administration, which is huge, you know, but something that, you know, I didn't even really think about, but it was, it was good to kind of have a little precursor yeah, of what that yeah, could be like a little on. bit. So, um, yeah, it was, it was good. Just like a kind of an, an overall of of everything you know it's hard to get into depth in you know that little of time um but uh still good to kind of have that overview of everything and, and again listen to or hear some things um 
that you didn't really know about as well. What um, do you think about what kind of coach? I'm sure you do, but do you think of, how do you think about what kind of coach you you would want to be? I mean, do you, do you have that in your head? Do you, do you have it like this is the kind of this is going to be Coach Lamb? This is how she's going to go about her business? Um, a little bit. You know, there's some things that you know I've experienced or or seen other coaches do that I'm like. I want to do that, you know, and then there's also things where, you know, it's like, I don't want to do that. I will never do that, you know, and, and again, that could change as we go along the way too. And I, and I realized kind of the reasoning behind it. Um, but yeah, you know, I've had, had really, really good mentors in all of my coaches. And so I hope that I'm just like them, you know, take everything uh -huh. that, that they have done and, um, their drills or philosophies and values and all of that. Um, hoping that I can can take that along with me and kind of steal from from their playbook. Mm -hmm. I would guess that, and I know you know this, but Coach Blitzaway would be a great resource as you go on in your career to know that you could call Dawn and and you could get her take on some situation that you're in, be it a, a straight, you know, how should I deal with this team or or uh, you know, more personal deal where it would be like, how should I develop a relationship or maintain a relationship with this particular player? Um, I would guess that, that that would be a great thing to look forward to that you could maintain a rapport with Coach, Coach Plitzelwhite on this. Yeah, absolutely. That was one thing at this convention that I was at. Um, you know, they said, keep a good relationship with your head coach. I'm like, perfect. You know, like that, <laughs> check, check. If I don't have anything else, here, you know, I have that. Um, but yeah, knowing that I can go, she knows a ton of people. It's kind of ridiculous. So um, if I ever have a question or, you know, need some sort of networking or have, you know, anything, anything, I feel very comfortable reaching out to her and um, know that she'll have, you know, multiple resources more than I could ever imagine for me. And then you mentioned uh, your coaches that you've had. You, you had a pretty special high school coach too that uh, I'm sure if you'd make a call would, would, would help you out the best he could as well. Right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Coach Sefner, he, 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 I know he would, you know, drop anything for me if he, if he could and um, would help me in, in any way, um, you know, basketball or non-basketball, you know, he'd be, he'd be willing and able to, to do that for me as well. So let's talk about maybe the differences between Coach Safner and Coach P. You know, obviously, you know, high school and college, huge difference in, in, in the game, um, the speed of the game, you know, the size of the players, all that. But um, maybe some differences in their coaching styles and maybe some of the, you know, similarities between the two. Yeah. Um, I'd say both of them are pretty, pretty intense. You know, in the heat of the moment, they can both get pretty intense and um, – obviously both are very passionate for the game and, and for their players. Um, there's multiple examples of that, you know, that I have seen from, from both of them. And that's something that I don't think I really realized until I got to college, you know, just, and I'm not even really sure why, but I, I do think coach P kind of takes it to another level, which is good, you know, um, but you just understand the, the need for for passion and urgency at the college level a little bit more than at the high school level you know you can kind of get away with just having a you know a few good players that are taller or faster or you know you can just kind of get away with some of those things and at the college level it's like not like that um so everything's got to be on point um differences um salary right now <laughs> well yeah yeah that's one of them for sure uh you know I don't I don't know coach Sefter I remember he would always just kind of I'd do I'd make a mistake or do something wrong and he'd just kind of look at me like I know you know that was wrong like don't do it again you know and and we kind of had especially you know as I got older 
I felt like we kind of had that understanding of, okay, like we, we both know that that was not the right decision. Let's just move on. And um, with coach P, you know, she, she just let you hear it, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and I, I, you know, she, she was probably a little softer on me than she needed to be. Um, but her and I, you know, we could kind of go back and forth with each other in a respectful way, you know, and I, I think that is because we just respected and trusted each other so much that we could kind of bounce ideas off or challenge each other a little bit. Um, but I'm not sure I'd do that with Coach Seffler. <laughs> <laughs> so, so as as you progressed in, in, in you know, sixth, seventh, eighth grade and, and you, well, let's go back even farther fourth, fifth, when you were watching uh, Coach Seffner and, and, you know, the, the Chargers out there, the Lady Chargers out there, how cool was that to grow up in a, a small town and, you know, be able to see your heroes, you know, being from a small town and, and kind of get to know them as well. And then to now where, you know, you're signing autographs um, at games and things like that. How cool has that progression been? It's kind of, it's kind of surreal. And, you know, I don't even really, I don't think I've even really realized it while I was playing, you know, having some time to reflect a little bit now and um, just see kind of the impact that, you know, this program, the, you know, University of South Dakota women's basketball has had on Vermilion as a community, but also, you know, just young girls, young athletes, in the state of South Dakota and surrounding. Um, that's something that I had no idea was going to happen, you know, and, and it, and it did, it kind of just happened. I feel like it just kind of fell into our hands. Um, but yeah, especially over the past, you know, few weeks with our run and everything, um, just the amount of support and, uh, you know, you see things on Twitter and, and all of that, just the, the love that we received from everyone has been crazy. Um, but going back, as you said, um, you know, being able to watch Coach Sefter and then, um, you know, my older sister and my cousins and everyone, uh, it was, you know, that was just kind of the, the way that's how it was going to be. And, um, and I'm really glad it was like that. You know, they, they set a standard and expectation um, that I didn't realize at the time, but, you know, I think had built a foundation for me to to be where I am now and um you know I couldn't could never be more thankful for for what they did and um again not on not on purpose but just playing a game that they enjoyed and and I grew to enjoy as well what do you think Mick I mean we've we've been going about 15 minutes here 10 15 minutes and it appears to be working the the <laughs> You know, no, so I'm, so I'm optimistic you know, that from here on out, we're going to be, I, I, it's going to be smooth sailing. You think so? <laughs> yeah. That's all right. Okay. So, you know, you know, Chloe, let's, let's talk about the last few weeks, you know, uh, let's start with the summit league tournament. Um, and then we'll, again, we'll kind of work our way back in the season and, and maybe, maybe even talk about some of those, those freshman jitters you might've had when way back when you were a freshman, if you remember any of those, but you know, uh, the Summit League tournament ending with a, a, a big victory. Obviously, anytime you can beat uh, South Dakota State, a great program, lots of great players, a great rivalry. Uh, you get the victory there. What was that experience like? And then, um, you know, knowing that you're going to go to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, the Summit League tournament is always a, just a great time, you know, a great time for basketball, starting March off really, really well every year. Um, I thought uh, our state game was, you know, we had the the right mindset going into it and um, it was a battle and, and it always is, you know, but I think especially there, just a really physical game. Um, you know, they took care of us in Brookings, the, the last game. Um, so just knowing that if we didn't kind of put a stop to it earlier, they were going to do that to us again a little bit. Um, you know, and I, th I thought we had a, a great mindset, a great focus on on what we needed to do to be successful. Um, 
I thought we executed just really, really well. It, it kind of seems like a long time ago. You know, we've we've played a few games since then, had a lot of fun since then. But uh, it's kind of where it, where it started. You know, I thought going into the postseason, having that just a solid win, it felt like um, to kind of carry us into the next few weeks, hopefully. Um, you know, it, we felt really good about that. <laughs> And then, you know, getting the, the, the news of where you're going to play and who you're going to play and the excitement of that. And then all of a sudden, not only, you know, oh, that's exciting, but all of a sudden you realize, oh, yeah, we got to play a game, though. You know, you know it's not all fun and games. For, for us fans, it's fun. But for the coaches and the players, you got to get to work right away. Absolutely. You know, the, Coach P, uh, we were in – Waco I think and just preparing for our opponent I can't, I'm not sure if it was uh Ole Miss or Baylor at the time but uh just talking about how you know like we don't really have a lot of family time here we've kind of got a job to do and 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 she is one who's like we're gonna have our fun you know we're gonna have fun but we're gonna do our work too and so she was just kind of preparing us and she goes, your family doesn't care. They're going to have fun without you. So they, <laughs> they don't care what you're doing. And at that, you know, I was kind of like, ah, you're right. You know, we want to see our families. We want to have fun. But um, for us to have more fun, we got to keep winning. Um, so that was, you know, kind of fun. I'm sure for the, you know, I've kind of been through that before and kind of known the um approach we take for games and the preparation that goes into it and I'm sure those young girls were a little bit like oh no this is gonna be impossible you know and maybe a little bit of uh overwhelmed there but um it worked out so I'll, I'll take it um but yeah selection show was an event in itself you know having to wait till the the very end to see our name come across I was a little scary you know in the back of your head you know you're going right but you gotta wait a while to see it so that was kind of fun um then all the media and everything that comes with that but again you know that kind of goes away and you realize okay we got to start preparing we've got a big opponent coming up um and there's a lot of noise you know a lot of distractions um you just got to make sure that you're unified in your goal and, and what the focus is. And um, I thought we did a, did a really, really good job with that. Yeah, you, you mentioned waiting. You guys were the last um, game to be uh, come across the, the TV there. And I, I saw you, I saw a picture and you were, you were obviously the veteran there because you were calm. Well, or maybe you just didn't jump as high as everybody else <laughs> because it looked like the young kids on, on, on the left of the picture, they were, they had a pretty good vertical and they were very excited, but you just looked really calm. So was, was that really the case where you really calm? Like you look on the basketball court, are you calm on the basketball court most of the time? Um, I think so. You know, I, I feel like um, as a player, I'm, I'm confident and, and trust that, uh, you know, our preparation will carry us. Um, and I feel like uh, there's enough people that kind of get their emotions in, you know, and, and can play a part. And, um, you know, if I, if I can be that one person that just kind of keeps a level head, um, then at least there's one, right? You know, and I think, uh, I think as I've gotten older, um, I've shown more emotion. I think when I first got here, it was just, maybe that was because I was so overwhelmed that I didn't even know what to do or what to feel. Um, but yeah, I think I've always kind of been like that and, and it just kind of carried through. Um, but yeah, I'll let, I'll let the other guys kind of get high and low and um, hopefully I can be the one to kind of bring them back to, to a level head. Um, but during the uh, the selection show, um, I don't know. I think it's all just a lot of a lot of noise. You know, they they try to make it a big deal, and it is. It really is. Um, and you know, sometimes I have to kind of remind myself that hey, you're, this is like you're going to the NCAA tournament. You can be excited about this, you know, and, and not get too caught up into 
winning a basketball game or, or whatever, whatever that may be. Um, but I don't have the biggest vertical. So that, that <laughs> so you, you go down to Waco, you, you, you win a couple of games, uh, you got to come back to Vermilion, you, you know, there's people lying in the streets and then there again, that's awesome. But all of a sudden I'm sure coach P reminded you really soon after that, Hey, we got another game coming up on Friday. Or yeah, Saturday, that was, I right. That was a lot of fun. Our fans are amazing. You know, you guys can see on Twitter or wherever on social media. Um, you know, whenever we ask them to send us off or welcome us back home, they're there in bunches and um, they travel really, really well too. you know, getting to to Waco. We had a huge crowd there and, and you know, I thought they were louder than the Baylor fans who were at home, you know, and then mm -hmm. getting to Wichita, of course, being close to home and having the, a home game pretty much, you know, and, and so that was a really special feeling just to, just to have that, that camaraderie as like an entire community is something that I know not everyone has, you know, but being able to play college basketball for the University of South Dakota, um, you know, I, I can tell people that that we had that, and that's a that's a pretty good feeling. So that, down in now you're down in Wichita, and you come out for that game, and you see all that red. Um, but you know, there again, you got to focus on a game, and you're playing a really really good team, and you know, kind of walk us through maybe the you know um, the emotion of pregame warmups to knowing you're you know you're going to battle Michigan, and, and you know how good they were trying to trying to get those motion emotions in check yeah um you, you said it you know Michigan's a very very physical team very athletic team um thought they were kind of peaking at the good at a really good time you know with Nas Hilton she's a beast on the court you know and and provides a lot of challenges for a lot of teams um you know we felt felt good having our crowd there you know that's always a, a good feeling kind of having you know that on your side and and them to be able to provide you energy um yeah just a, a good good game you know we kind of had some had some opportunities not really go our way um like we we mentioned this earlier uh you know being in foul trouble personally and I thought our our young kids and kids that had to step up um, you know, did, did an awesome job with that. And they have, you know, the, the entire season, especially late, um, late in our tournament. Um, but yeah, did, they did an amazing job, um, keeping us in the game and then elevating our game as well. Um, but yeah, just, uh, just a few opportunities, um, didn't go our way and, and it ends just like that, you know? Um, but yeah, I couldn't, it's hard to, and, and I said this after our, you know, in our post-game presser, you know, losing hurts and it's awful because that's all you remember. You just remember losing and the things you could have done better. And, um, you know, and then I think with our crowd there, it was easier to remember all the good things we did and, and the impact that we had um, playing a simple game. So it's everybody that's ever played athletics knows that feeling of it's over. The season's over. And then now for you going in that locker room, walking off that court, knowing your season's over, not only your season, but your career is now over um, as a coyote. Uh, very emotional, I'm sure. But maybe talk about. I don't, you know, you don't have to talk about how obviously you were sad and all that, but you more so about the team and, you know, how they handled and what a special time it is in a locker room uh, with teammates that you love. Yeah, I think it's a fairly universal feeling of just unknown, right? You just don't know, you don't even know what to do with yourself. You're hugging your teammates and, um, you know, thinking about, you know, you said it, just how, how you're not going to lace up those shoes again or put the jersey on. And, um, 
you know, for, for Hannah and Liv and I coming back, you know, we got pretty lucky, I'd say, you know, getting that extra year and, and, and what we did with that. Um, I think that is something that all of us are very proud of. Um, but the young girl, you know, you just, you, you hurt for them, but know that they, you know, got a taste of, of what this is like and um, hope that they can chase that the next few years. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a hard time. You know, you, you hear coach P kind of speak for, for the last time for the year and, um, it, it, it sucks, <laughs> you know, I, I don't, <laughs> uh, but it's a, you know, it, it just a lot of emotions, everything kind of coming, coming down at once. It feels like, um, but I think it, that's a special feeling too, you know, one that shows that there's a lot of people that care and um it's a team that that's kind of fighting to the death um and that's that's special absolutely Mick uh you know as you watched mm -hmm. them uh you know throughout the the season and, and the tournaments you know maybe what struck out to you about Chloe and her teammates and and how they uh you know performed and well, the, handled the, things the big thing was that as much as you can look on paper and see all the minutes you guys have played over the course of your careers and expect that okay this is going to be a really good season it was still going to come down to some pivotal moments where if you didn't do exact you know the best that you're capable of doing it probably wasn't going to work out quite right i mean with south dakota state there you don't beat south dakota state maybe you don't get into the tournament i mean they didn't uh, and, and to, to think back in November, it's like, well, okay, we got this gate we we're loaded this year, blah, blah, blah. You still got to go out and do it. And that's, there's some complexity to that as far as I can tell. I mean, I've never been in that position, but it seems like, you know, knowing that there's some expectations there and if you don't meet them, there's going to be a part of at least the people who are watching you play are going to think, my goodness, that was all for nothing. They came back for nothing. Uh, and I'm over, way overstating it here, but how did you, in those in those little spaces, how did you make sure that you got through them? Um, it, it's interesting you, you kind of bring this up because uh, with the non-conference that we had, um, you know, I didn't think we were as successful as we could have been. Give, those teams are are tough teams, you know, and I don't think we had reached our, our highest potential, which is good. You know, that's very early in the season. You don't want to hit that quite yet, but um, just a, a lot of learning um, opportunities there early in the season and playing good teams, which is what our coaching staff tries to do. Um, it prepares you for later, you know? And so I think playing South Carolina and, you know, Northwestern and, um, Pitt, you know, who, you know, kind of, kind of fell off as the season goes on, but at the time was, was a, you know, a, a really big game for us. Um, but yeah, you look back kind of the, maybe at Christmas or start of the conference season, and you're thinking, if we don't win this thing, we're done, you know, and, and that's not a good feeling to have. And as you said, the, the experience that the three of us had, um, you know, we kind of realized that a little bit earlier than I think the young kids do. Um, but I also think their their perspective of just playing a game and it doesn't really, you know, not that it doesn't mean anything, but because that's definitely not true, but they just don't know the the impact because of the, the lack of experience. Um, but I think that could, can be helpful as well, kind of the two being able to balance each other out. Um, but yeah, that, that definitely crosses your mind of, you know, early in the season, um, it's almost like it, it's win or go home for later in the season, you know, cause if we lose the conference tournament, you know, we, we probably don't make the, the tournament just as state didn't. Um, so yeah, you, you, you do think about that. You try not to, you try not to look too far forward and get lost in, in those big, big goals but they're always in your mind and, and motivating you for for that day that practice um you know the next game whatever it may be 
Um, I talked to Hannah about this uh, a couple of weeks ago, but uh, the coach splits away would, I mean, make, these you know it's like okay you have to go out for ice cream with with one of the younger players or I don't know she was she was saying it was really cool but also acknowledging that for somebody who's been around for a while maybe a lot of people would look at it as a little silly that that we're putting we're having to do these sorts of things um but overall do you see the benefit the magic in that the benefit of that and and how it maybe helped you this year Oh yeah. You know, I think the older you get, the more you realize how important the the little things are, you know, and, and you, you finally understand why coach P is mad at you for not diving on the ball or, you know, it's even in practice. Right. And then, then you go watch a different game or something just on TV and you see a team that doesn't and like, gosh, that looks bad, you know? And so you you realize just the little things that, that really go a long way. And I think that is something that coach P always kind of preached to us. Um, But yeah, just going to get ice cream or um, going for a walk with a young kid. um, You know, you just, you just learn more about them. And I think that's easier for communication, you know, approaching someone and receiving a message. Um, but also as you, you know, you get down the line of, of the year and, and it gets hard to come to practice every day. You know, that's something that we talked about as a team. You kind of get to that point in the season where everything's a grind and you got to kind of get over a little bit of a hump there. And, and I think that is when the relationships that you have built with your teammates really come into play. Yeah. So, uh, you mentioned Coach P a few times. Um, Mick mentioned that maybe Coach P got a, a nice little raise. Um, and we'll talk about that. But, you know, what was it like playing for her um, for five years? And, you know, was she um, instrumental in you coming back? Yeah, you know, she's she, she's a one of a kind, I think, you know, in, in a lot of ways. Um, and she's taken our program from not very, you know, good, but middle of the pack, you could say, and, and just elevated our program. And, um, you know, I think, I think she would try to put, put that success on her players, but, um, you know, that that's all on her and, and building a culture here that, um, you know, just, just breeds success and excellence. Um, but yeah, if I, I had the opportunity to come back and I think I would have really, really regretted saying no, um, you know, my, my body was in a good shape. I didn't really have anything pulling me away. Um, you know, and if I wouldn't have, I, I wouldn't have a, a sweet 16 experience under my belt, you know, and, and so very, you know, the pandemic is awful, you know, but but it gave me this opportunity. And so being able to have something positive come out of it, um, something I won't forget. Well, there's a lot of people that are glad and happy that you came back, obviously the six, sweet 16 run, but, you know, getting to, getting to see you play again um, was, you know, that, that's a big deal for a lot of people that were cheering for those coyotes, Nick. And how cool is that? Well, you have a whole bunch of people there who love USD, love the sports. And they want to have something to get this level of excitement around. In addition to just enjoying it themselves, they enjoy the fact that everybody else is enjoying it. Um, and it, it was just, I think, that just such a great gift that you guys gave that university in being able to pull this off to the level that you did is, is just something that... Uh, it's, it's hard to, you can't quantify it, but it's absolutely something that people are going to remember for a very long time. Absolutely. So, uh, Chloe, we've had you on for a while now. Well, we ha- we've, we've tied up a lot of your time. A lot of it won't even be seen because that's, of that's the, more the tech, technical <laughs> difficulties. I'm sure, you know, being at the Final Four all weekend, I'm sure you got to bed early, but uh, I'm, I'm guessing that, you know, you might want to catch on, up on some sleep. But how about academically? Where do you where are you sitting academically? 
Uh, so I finished my undergrad in the winter. So I was done in December with that. Um, kind of prolonged it, knowing that I was coming back for another year. Um, and then this spring started a master's in interdisciplinary studies. Um, that'll kind of depend on, you know, my, my next adventure, you know, if I become a GA or, or um, you know, that'll, that'll kind of depend on that, what comes, what comes next. Um, but that, that would be the plan, you know, be able to be a GA somewhere and, and stay connected with basketball and continue to get my master's. Um, yeah, we, uh, Liv and I were kind of in the same boat. She's kind of got her, her life together a little bit more. She's going to PT school next year. <laughs> um, but we, we, we kind of told people we were just started a master's just so we could keep playing basketball. You know, you're kind of in that, that in between area where you, you should be done, but there's not enough time to finish another thing either. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, uh, best of luck with the search for a coaching job. Um, search for a gig, play some ball. Well, yeah, <laughs> we haven't even talked about that. Uh, you know, what, what are those, um, you know, options, you know, how, how does that work? You know, are you continuing to practice and stay in shape? And then do you, did you get an agent, things like that? Um, I don't have an agent. Um, I'm probably, and this is really sad for me to say, I'm probably the least informed or least knowledgeable uh, WNBA draft prospect, I guess that's, <laughs> that would be what I was called. Um, but yeah, it's really sad, but you know, our season ended and I was coming here a couple days later and it was like, okay, we need to figure out if we're going to do this. What do I have to do to do it? You know, what papers do I have to sign? Am I going to the combine? Am I not going to the combine? What's the difference between the combine and the, you know, the draft? And there was, there was a lot going on these past few days before I took off to the cities. Um, but yeah, in the draft, going to see, um, you know, what kind of comes with that. Um, and that that's really kind of, you know, what I'm waiting for, just waiting for, see if my name gets called. And, and from there, we, we figure it out from there. So that's the, that's kind of the plan for now. Uh, a lot of exciting stuff coming for you in the, uh, you know, the, the next few weeks, next few months, um, as you, you know, pursue the, the professional side of, of basketball. And then obviously, you know, the long term um, of coaching, uh, I make it, I mean, if, if somebody drafts her, they're going to get a heck of a player. And um, do you think she's going to be an okay coach? I, I think so. I think they should hire her if she doesn't want to play ball. Her right now, <laughs> head coach, right, right <laughs> after you quit playing, that would be a, a first. But I, I think, I it, think would. There, it would. I think there would be a lot of people who'd be, be very supportive of it, at least at this point. Yeah, I don't. After that first season, we'll see where everyone stands. <laughs> after that. <laughs> so, well, Chloe, uh, thanks for your time. Uh, thanks for you know, a, a great career, great high school career. You know, a lot of us got to follow you in high school. Um, I know everybody in Sully Buttes and I know your, your old coach back there and his wife are very, very proud of you. Um, and, you know, we're obviously we're praying for this the Co coach Seffner and everything that he's going on as well. Um, and then from, uh, you know, everybody in the state of South Dakota, you know, obviously the Coyote fans, they, they followed you and supported you. But, you know, in, in the state of South Dakota, women's basketball, it, it, you know, whether you're wearing red or blue, you know, they're they're supportive and, and uh, they're very appreciative of what you got to what you did on the court and uh, how you handled yourself through all, all of the ups and downs. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. A lot of people making me feel very loved. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Awesome. So, Chloe, we're going to we're going to wrap this up. And uh, then, we, Mick, we're going to stay on and we're going to talk to Jim Ricketts about some refereeing stuff and uh, see how that goes. But, Chloe, anything else before you, you know, we, we here's what will probably happen. I'll probably try to end it with you here, and it probably won't. So we'll probably talk for another four hours rather than, you know, <laughs> since we missed that. But um, I, I 
appreciate your patience um, and sticking on through the technical difficulties. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, I wish I could say it was a first, but it's not. It's, that's, just, that's just the way we roll here on uh, Mondays with Nick. And uh, so we appreciate your time. Of course. This is a lot of fun. I appreciate, appreciate the offer. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks so much, thank Lloyd. You. Yes, thank you. All right. I think if you close out, Chloe. Okay. All righty. Thank you again. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Okay. So we are going to continue this on, Nick. We, we've got a friend of ours here, um, Jim Ricketts. You've known for a long time. I've known for a long time. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit of refereeing. Yeah. Now, you know, Nick, don't get on him. We're not going to, we're not going to yell and say, Referee stay. I've always been good. <laughs> I've always been good with friends. But you know, uh, obviously, refereeing uh, takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. You know, to craft. You know, be be good at your craft, so to speak. But maybe Jim, uh, let's first, you know, maybe introduce yourself and maybe how you, you got into refereeing. I kind of didn't have a choice. My father was a ref, and so as a kid, I'd go to games and it just became part of what I did. And I, it wasn't something I intended to do, but once I got to college, it was a way to be involved in athletics, stay in shape and uh, earn some money. And so that was the main reason why I started. So it was something I knew, knew about. And rather than flip burgers, um, I could make a little more money referee in um, sub varsity basketball game run with the USD. And, Started out working junior high games with the, there was a couple of brothers down in Vermillion named the Lever brothers down there when I, when I started refereeing and became a, a pretty prominent athlete. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they, 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 they did pretty well for themselves. They did pretty well. That, <laughs> that's, that's when I started. I was like 1989 down at USD and I think they were like seventh grade, something like that. And, and then uh, the athletic director at uh, Vermillion High School saw what I was doing, hired me for some varsity stuff. Tom Capitan got to know him and introduced him. And so he would hire me to do sub varsity stuff in Yankton. And then it just kind of worked from there and work your way up and make connections, show how you can do and, and learn, listen, listen and learn, especially from those. I mean, when you get a chance to work with a Capitan or, or some of the Joe Vig, I got to work with back then. He was from Yankton. You know, um, some of those other guys that would take you under your wing, under the wing. I mean, just try to listen as much as you could, you know, when you're young and know it all, but um, that, that's, that's how I got going. Yeah, and you, you mentioned starting, um, you know, sub-varsity, and you, you worked your way up. You, uh, you did high school basketball. You still do high school basketball. You've done college. Yeah. Uh, when I was, I don't know if you knew this, Nick, but when I was the assistant for the Sky Force, he would work a few of the Sky Force games as yeah. well. So you've had a, a, a big career, and not only basketball, you've done football and, and uh, things like that too. So obviously, right now, um, refing shortage. I, I would, I, I would, I don't know if we would use the word shortage, but there's not as many guys coming to take our place. Uh -huh. And I still think of myself as a young guy, but it's not that way anymore. <laughs> There's not the, the, not the 10, 12, 14 college guys you see working the sub varsity games coming to try to get games that I work, you know. Yeah. You just don't see as much of that. Um, so I think there's lots of different ways to promote, to promote it. Um, you know, one thing you have to learn when you get into this business is um, everybody doesn't love you. <laughs> um, Half are going to love you, half are going to not love you so much. But I think what I learned as older I got is, is communication with coaches is probably the biggest thing. That, that's the hardest thing to learn. And the best way to learn communication with coaches is working in front of that coach more than once, you know, once they get to uh -huh. see you. So, but we, I mean, if, if you're interested in getting into officiating, no matter where you're at in the state, you can, you can contact the State High School Activity Association or talk to your local high school activities director. That those two things are the first stop. Mm -hmm. and, and they can point you in the right direction, both of them, depending on where you live and things like that. Um, yeah, I think, you know, especially in a small town out there, you know, 
go to go to your athletic trainer, go yep. to your 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 logo coaches and say, hey, I'm willing to help here. Yep. I, I like it, and and hopefully they'll maybe get somebody like you to help mentor them along the way because yep. you mentioned the mentors you had. How important was that mentorship with Captain and Big and all those guys? It's an important deal. I mean, and when you're young, you don't want to listen, but you got to listen. And as much as you think I know everything, there's so much to learn in the fishing, and especially about why things happen, how, how to do things properly, how to communicate properly, how to, how to deal with upset players, upset coaches, and, and make the right calls and try to be in the right position. And it's so much. But any, any advice from, from a mentor usually should be put in the back of your head. You know, and I remember it's, it's hard listening to your father a lot. <laughs> um, but he taught me a ton. <laughs> and especially, I got to work one varsity basketball game with my father. But I was, I was so lucky to work high school football in the same crew with him and college football in the same crew with him um, for a lot of years. And it was just a lot of fun. And, and a lot of other guys, you know, football, Cappy was in football, Orrin Anderson in football. These are, these are guys that, they also took me on the football side. And, and you mentioned a lot of fun. Um, maybe touch a little bit on the refereeing brotherhood, the, 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 yeah. the close connectedness you have, not only with the guys that yeah. you rep with each, but, but across the state. It's, you, don't, you don't understand how close you are. I see Brad Cooner back who showed up here. Um, we we ref together 20 some years ago. And we're still good friends. We don't see each other a lot. Until you get on a court or a football field, and, and, and you're a team too, and you have to trust your teammates, just like being on, on, the, on the field playing the game, officiating and facilitating the game, you have to trust your teammates there too. That's a big trust. And yeah, and, and so the stories we have and, and about plays and situations and trips before the game, trips after the game, are all just a lot of fun. Yeah. And that's, that really plays into the whole experience, you know, because a lot of fans just see you show up at the game, but mm -hmm. that the game, you know, obviously you got to get there, you got to get home and, you know, you have your pregame talks, you know, just like a, a yeah. team does. And you then know? we do stuff in the off season, just like teams and coaches mm -hmm. do. And one thing, a little lifting weights, <laughs> uh, jumping rope. Uh, I'll, I'll do that with you, Nick. Okay. All right. <laughs> Um, one thing I do want to sit here and, and promote a little bit, um, I'm wearing the Sioux Fire Christians of Clinic shirt. We put on a football clinic every year, um, and it's a nonprofit, and it's just for high school football officials. And this year it's June 20th and 21st, and if any information on that, you can go to SiouxEmpireFootballOfficials.com, or you can um, get a hold of me, get a hold of the State Activities Association, they'll point you towards us. Orrin Anderson's a clinic director. Myself and Todd Lambs with help and, and some other people. Um, we all volunteer, but we have um, right now the, the officials that come in to help us. We have Brandon Cruz, who, who worked the national championship NCAA game two years ago. Um, NFL officials, we have a referee, Brad Allen, um, down judge, Ed Camp, umpire, Fred Bryan, um, field judge, um, Tom Hill. That's all I can think of right now. We do have Brandon Campbell works out for replay, and Bill Lamani is supposed to be coming, who is on TV on ESPN. Up used to be a Big Ten referee, so we have a great group of guys. But it's all focused on high school mm -hmm. and high school officiating, and it, the cost is very minimal. It's 125 bucks for the camp. It's two days long. Um, I'm telling you, the amount of information and the people we have coming. It's, it's priceless. Yeah. And so that's the football side. And I think, uh, you know, again, kind of, you're going to learn a lot about officiating and, you know, all that stuff. But you're going to, just like Chloe talked about, networking at the final, you know, yep. that's a great opportunity to get to know some other officials. So then, you know, if somebody in there is missing somebody on the crew for a week, maybe you can pop in and, exactly. and help somebody and things like that. Exactly. And, you know, you're networking if you move. Where you can work and you can work too. Awesome. Thank There's you. no, I, I was, I'm always curious about this, and I've, I've gotten to know refs over the years very well. And a lot of friends are from the referee ranks. Uh, 
but the there's no replacement for experience is there there's no and you could you alluded to this but talking to you guys like before a big game before a, a high school game where you know it's going to be both sides it's going to there's not going to be an empty seat and having the capacity to actually enjoy preparing for that and being a part of that event would be where there's no way ever if I did it for a hundred years that I would ever be able to do that. But you guys get in that position. How does it, how do you get to where you're kind of comfortable with what you're doing or really think experience? That's just, I mean, that's, that's when I feel calm when, when it's like, I don't know, coaching. You're not elevated out of control when things are going good and you're in the zone. I don't know if you call the zone, but when the game's going good and we know, and sometimes you got to jump in when the game's not going good, yeah. but that's our job. Yeah. Just like your job as a coach. So, but it's our job is most of the time we have to remain pretty calm. When other when, when things go to crap, our job is to keep the crap and settle it down. <laughs> yeah. And so sometimes we might have to bark a bit, but we got to we got to facilitate it and keep calm. Mm -hmm. But that's 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 when I feel at home. That's when I feel like this is where I belong. And so that's why I think some of the refs do it. I mean, you talk to the Kelly fighters and other people. I mean, it's it's addictive, kind of like coaching. Yeah. Well, you know, you're, you it's competitive. It, it is you competitive. Know, you it, you want to do the best. You're out there. You're not trying to make sure. Or O'Gorman wins or Roosevelt wins or Avon wins. No, you're out there to compete in the, a sense of doing the best job you can for those kids that are on the court. Yeah. And you don't want to come off and uh, kick this many calls yeah. or anything. You, it's, a, it's a competition with yourself and it's a competition, you know, to, to work your way up the ladder and do better games. And, 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 and you know, you, you mentioned uh, better games, uh, working your way up. Uh, you, you had the state championship game um, in double A, you know, as a ref, that's got to be, uh, you know, like I don't, not a pat on the back, but that's exciting stuff. That's, that's what you work for that's what is to get, uh, you know, the recognition to have somebody say, you know what, I want these three guys to do the championship game. And, and you know, you've done it before, right? Yes. There, there, yeah. There's many guys out there who deserve it. And so it's an honor to be picked. Um, it's, it's, and, and to work with those guys and, and come off the court saying, we did a good job. Um, we left it all there and, and gave, gave the coaches and the players a fair shake. You know, that, that means a lot. And, and that's what we try to do. It, that's it, why we're there. Mick, I, I think he's right, except for uh, you. I think the Michigan uh, game against USD, used up, the, the rest weren't very good in that game. So, well, at the, toward the end, and it seemed like. I didn't hear inklings of that from my father, too. <laughs> but that's a USD fan. You know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sitting, sitting eight hours away, watching it on TV. And not even getting really decent replays <laughs> of the, the fouls call. It just had to be. But every, yeah. everybody watches games through their own their own eyes. And there's different eyes for different different people. And I don't – when I go to watch a game, it, I can't watch a game and enjoy it. I watch it. Through officials' eyes, yeah. and I know probably coaches. You watch it through coaching yeah. eyes. On what happens there? And as a reporter, you probably watch it through all sorts of eyes, trying to see what happens. So it's different eyes for everybody, and the parent eyes. <laughs> those are tough eyes to watch <laughs> too. I mean, I, you know, I get it. I yeah. get it. That's. I mean, you you have to understand that. Anything else before we let Jim go here? I I'm think getting hungry. Yeah, clothes has been. Grilling some burgers here. I can smell the burgers. And, you know, I'm getting hungry, getting thirsty. You know. Well, appreciate the fact that you came on. That's really Thank cool. Absolutely uh, appreciate it. And uh, the the stewardship and brotherhood. I mean, two things there. They're tight with each other, and they're tight with their profession, with with getting other people involved in it, and that just the idea that. I mean, there's a lot of people out. If you want to get involved, if you think you might want to get involved, there are a ton of people who really know what they're doing mm -hmm. who want to help you do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I spent uh, Saturday with a bunch of officials watching the games. You know, they, they talk. Uh, they it's, had story after story after yeah. story. 
And like you said, if you want to get involved in this, there's people like uh, Jim that would love to be a mentor to somebody, would love to, you know, answer any questions about how to get involved, about, you know, the steps to do that too you know, and how to move up that ladder, so to speak. And, and anyway, you guys can, I know you guys will help uh, a young ref any way they can. And that's pretty cool. Yes. So we thank you for your time. Thank you. And uh, Mick, I'm going to, I'm going to end this here. And what are the odds that this ends? And then I could figure out how to download it to YouTube and Facebook. I don't know. I, I give North Carolina a lot better shot of winning tonight. Than <laughs> oh, come on. Well, you know, I don't even know what to say. You know, I, I, I was I was pretty confident that you were going to say, I got all the confidence in the world in you, buddy. But you know what? I mean, that's honest. Hey, they're, they're, that, you know, they're only four point dogs. So no. I'm, it's not like I'm throwing you under the bus. Yeah. Well, since it took us 20 minutes to figure out that we couldn't get it on Zoom, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing in the next 20 minutes, I might be throwing this table over or, you know, maybe a bad word or something Just like that. Let me know and I'll make sure I record it. Okay. All right. So we'll see everybody next week. I don't know where we're, yeah. we're going to be or who we're going to have. Got a couple of um, messages out there. And, uh, but this has been fun. You know, again, last thoughts on Chloe Lamb. How incredible Just of a to, person is she? With, like a lot of the people who've been in that program recently, player, tough competitive, very skilled, excellent player. And then uh, personally, just a smart person who gets it. Um, and we saw that today yeah. talking to her. Absolutely. Absolutely. Last thing, David Herbster, we know David. I sent a text to him and said, hey, just another day out there, you know, because uh, obviously in the last, Chloe's been busy, right? Yes. How about David Herbster and, and being an athletic director at a, uh, D1 school and, and having to go through all this, uh, you know, I'm guessing he doesn't see his wife much um, in the last we, month. We here. should just start text bombing him and <laughs> just for just to try to complicate things yeah. a little bit. <laughs> so we wish uh, David all the best in finding a women's coach and, and everything that he's got going on. And congratulations to him. Congratulations to Coach P and uh, obviously all of everybody at uh, the University of South Dakota. Uh, we didn't mention. And I got to mention it because people will rail on me if I don't. A great run by the South Dakota State women. Oh my goodness! You know, it just—it was—it was the absolute best message you could send to the NCAA, the people who select the teams, and how stupid it was that they weren't in there. It just made a mockery of some of the things that they, whatever the criteria were, whoever the people were, something was off on this one, and the information was all there yep. that they should have been involved. Yeah. And I, I, we've talked about this in the past, but, you know, the, the knock on the Summit League is, you know, there's two good teams always and then the rest. Well, if those two good teams are two of the best teams, exactly. it's okay. It doesn't matter how crappy the rest of the league is. Exactly. You know, put, put them in. Yeah, put them in. But uh, congratulations. Yep. It, it was a lot of fun to see, you know, uh, frost packed like uh, it was and, and things like that. So yep. congratulations to uh, Chloe and good luck to Chloe and uh, – Mick, we'll talk to you next week.